Hey y'all, Zach McDonald, your real estate agent with Real Property Associates, and this is my response to Matthew Gardner's top 10 predictions for 2023. Matthew Gardner is the chief economist for Windermere Real Estate. It's a local and regional real estate company here, and he is a very well-respected economist and talks about the market on a monthly basis, just like I do, but he's an economist, so you know he knows his stuff and he's very well respected within the real estate community. He put out his predictions here recently and I'll link up the article and also the YouTube video here in the description as well as you can probably find it somewhere around here in this video. But I wanna share some thoughts. As I was listening to his predictions, it made me smile because a lot of these same things are things I've been talking about for months and pointing towards uh, for the year as well in my market updates. But I wanna go through his predictions here and I wanna add some of my thoughts as we go through and I think you'll find a lot of value by listening to his video as well. The first prediction on Matthew Gardner's list is that there is no housing bubble and I completely agree with him on this point. I've been talking about this as well for, I don't know, it's probably been a few years as prices have been increasing. I think there's this, um, continued fear that what we're experiencing right now is gonna harken back to the 2007, eight housing crisis and the subsequent price drops that we saw, the plummeting of prices. He mentions here that he doesn't see any systemic decline or drop in home prices that are gonna be coming out of the 2023 housing market. He does think we're gonna have year over year price declines, which I've been talking about as well but I would agree with him that I don't think we're gonna see any massive pop in any kind of bubble. Number two on his list here, mortgage rates dropping. This is something that Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae have been talking about as well. They're expecting that we're gonna see mortgage rates drop towards the end of the year, but we're still gonna be in the low sixes to high fives. His uh, article here, when he published this predictions, uh, 7% was where rates were hovering around. Now they're hovering around six and a quarter percent. So they've been coming down a little bit. And if Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae are correct, um, and, and Matthew Gardner here is pointing towards those lower rates towards the second or third quarter, again, not low, but considerably lower than where they were when they were up over 7%. And he references here the historical average in the mid sevens, a 5%, five and a half percent rate is still considerably lower than historical averages. His third prediction is that he does not expect inventory to grow significantly. He mentions that although inventory levels rose in 2022, they are still well below their long-term averages. He mentions in 2023, he doesn't expect a significant increase in the number of home sales, as many homeowners do not wanna lose their low mortgage rate. I love this part that's coming up, and I'm reading this because I think this was a key fact in the video. He says, in fact, to estimate that 25 to 30 million homeowners have mortgage rates around 3% or lower. Of course, home, homes will be listed, <clears throat> of course, homes will be listed for sale for the usual reasons of career changes, death and divorce, but the 2023 market will not have the normal turnover in housing that we have seen in recent years. I haven't read <laughs> this whole entire blog for many reasons, but I think that this section was worth reading and bringing attention to. He did a calculation with the amount of people that purchased over the past few years, and he also added in the amount of refinances, estimating or coming up with a rough number of people that have significantly low interest rates. And I think there is this conversation I've been having, this thread for people that do have really low rates where they're like, okay, well, do I really want to sell my house and buy something else and have a rate that's double? And that's a tough question. I think it's much easier in this environment to move houses, right? Upgrade your house, downsize potentially, and that might, maybe if you're downsizing, the mortgage rates don't matter as much, it's more about the price. But I also think with buying another house, I'm currently keeping my eyes out open, and I think anybody that wants to buy a bigger house or in a different neighborhood might wanna consider this year as a year to do that because you don't have to worry about, at least at this point, some of the craziness that was happening over the previous years. So with that being said, there are many people that will decide not to sell or not to move because they wanna keep their payment where it's at and they either can't or don't want to afford the significantly higher payments with the higher interest rates. So some 
we're thinking we might see a panic of people trying to sell their houses. But in reality, and what I thought would happen, is that we would not see that, which we have not. And I suspected as we head into the spring here this year, that we will see people selling their houses. We might even see a little bit fewer than we did last year. And I definitely don't think we're gonna see a flood of new housing inventory. Number four on Matthew's list is that there will be no buyer's market, quote unquote, but that there'll be a more balanced market. And I think this is a big point just to sit on for a sec. We've been in a seller's market over the past few years where essentially the sellers have all the negotiating power and that's really what it means. I recorded a video about this, so if you wanna check out more of my detailed explanation of what a buyer's market is versus seller's market, you can feel free to check out that video. But essentially, a seller's market is when a seller has a negotiating power, a buyer's market is when the buyer has a negotiating power, and a balanced market is when there's some give and take, right? Sellers and buyers have to work together to find the price and offer terms and contingencies, et cetera. And this year we saw a really, really hot seller's market and it's been transitioning towards a more balanced market where there is some back and forth negotiation. It's not just one-sided and it was completely one-sided. He's not predicting that it's gonna be one-sided on the buyer's end. And currently it is definitely not one-sided, but there is some negotiation. And I would agree with him that I think that 2023 is gonna see a balanced market. Matthew Gardner's fifth prediction for 2023 is that sellers will have to become more realistic. And I would say it a little different. I would say that they need to adjust their expectations. It's the same idea. Um, I think sellers are realistic um, about what they can get, but that expectation needs to be set uh, properly. And that is on the real estate community to share that and be accurate and um, sharing the truth about what's going on. I think that sellers also need to be able to move on, and he does say this in his video, move on from the idea that they're gonna sell for as much as their neighbor did, or that they're going to have the type of competition that their neighbor did, because they're not. If they held off and kept their house for years, maybe, um, that would return in the future, and it, and it very likely may, but in the current climate, 2023, we're probably not going to see the multiple offer situations regularly, and we're definitely not gonna be seeing prices in the same ballpark as they were at the same time last year. Number six on Matthew Gardner's list for 2023 is that workers will return to work, and he says sort of here. Um, I think a lot of us expected there would be more clarity about working from home or working from the office coming in. There's been a lot of remote work continuing into 2022, even with a lot of the mandates and mask rules changing or being removed completely. More and more people are in the office part of the time, working from home part of the time. I think some companies are okay with permanent work from home situations and some have completely reversed course saying, yeah, we can work from home, but now we can't. So I think 2023, I would agree with him. There's gonna be more clarity. I think that's the big, big word, clarity about what the expectations are moving forward into the future. And that will potentially cause people to move to the area or move out of the area. Um, and in the Seattle area, there's quite a bit of people working remotely. And in some of these other tech hubs or where pricing is more expensive, if you can get a higher paying job and keep that pay and move somewhere else, that's nice. Lower housing costs, better pay, put those together. That's pretty sweet. But I think some of those companies are going to start asking people to be in the office more frequently. And in that case, living in Colorado and working in Seattle or living in Boise and working in Seattle might not make as much sense. Number seven, new construction activity is unlikely to increase. And then he starts off, I'll read this section for you. Permits for new construction are down by over 17% year over year as our new home starts. I predict, Matthew Gardner predicts, that builders will pull back further in 2023 with new starts coming in at a level we haven't seen since before the pandemic. I have to say that's not really good news because we've been behind and we've been trying to catch up <laughs> on supply for new construction. And so what I think happens in this situation is it makes sense financially for builders not to be building, whether they're nervous or it's expensive, 
but there are still more and more people. And in some markets like Seattle, we're still having more and more people come here. And I think when you have less construction, you have more pressure on the existing housing inventory, and that just continues to make problems, especially around affordability. So this is one of the reasons why I think that we're not going to see any kind of massive drop in prices and why I think in the future we're going to continue to see prices going up because as the market changes, as the economy uh, corrects, as we have, uh, if there is an official recession that's called and we need to drop rates and again, it all is this cycle, right? If it becomes more affordable again, now we have more people that can buy and there's more demand and there's more demand on what's there, but there's nothing new being created even if there's more people trying to buy. So again, I think this continues to perpetuate that problem of affordability uh, in the market. And as interest rates come down, people will have more money to spend and then it's gonna pick right back up. Number eight on Matthew Gardner's list for 2023 is that not all markets are created equal. He notes that some markets experience more growth or quicker growth in the housing market. And he's predicting that some areas are going to see larger drop-offs and he's in his video names a few different markets or uh, ideas of markets seattle was one of those places that did appreciate at one of the higher rates across the country and we also according to all the news articles and news outlets have seen some of the largest declines in pricing as well again looking back at year over year data we are up but if you look at the peak in the valley of 2022 we're definitely uh, we've seen some big drops so I think <clears throat> again Seattle has been experiencing this other markets and agents I know in other markets are experiencing this more recently even though we started experiencing this in the early summer number nine on the list couple more here <clears throat> affordability will continue to be a major issue he's predicting that in most markets, home prices will not increase in 2023, but any price drop will not be enough to make housing more affordable. And I think that's the key I wanna pull out of this section. I would agree on this part as well. Housing is almost less affordable now, even though prices are lower. And if I'm a buyer, I wanna have a lower price, but I, you also need to be able to afford to buy your house. And so even with prices being lower, the affordability is worse and until interest rates come down, that doesn't really help with the affordability. And unless prices drop considerably, the, uh, the, the affordability was actually better with the higher prices and the lower interest rates. And so at this point, it's making it more difficult for some to take advantage of the lower prices because they can't afford to take advantage of those lower prices. And so I would agree that I don't think we're gonna see a large enough drop in, or difference in price with the way the market is at the moment. Again, unless something um, cataclysmic happens, I really think that we've seen the worst of the corrections in prices here, at least in the Seattle area. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I, would, I would sit with Matthew Gardner on this. I don't think there will be much of a substantial difference here that will affect people's ability to buy. Last but not least, Matthew Gardner says that the government needs to take housing more seriously. And I don't really want to get into the politics in this section, but he did jump into that. And he brought up what I talked about, how we have a, quote, wave of demand coming from millennials and Gen Z and that the pace of housing production must significantly increase. But many markets simply don't have enough to land, land to build on. The other part is the cost for that. But there does need to be some action. And I know Seattle's been working on this and is one of the leaders in, if you look across the country, at trying to figure this out. We've had zoning changes in, in areas. We have different types of housing being built in the same neighborhoods, some that's more affordable um, in the new construction space, the detached condo units and the um, ADUs and allowing some of those to be built on the same property. So there's definitely an emphasis on adding more inventory to these neighborhoods and doing what is called urban infill development. But at the same time, I think that he brings up a good point. We do need something to change because if we look back at his other point about how he thinks there's going to be less new construction, well, that doesn't really solve the problem that we have here. 
And if part of that's related to the cost of construction that's on builders, there's got to be some ways to work with home builders to incentivize them to continue to build. So I guess that's how we'll wrap it up here. I think Matthew Gardner brings a lot of value to the real estate community. Matthew Gardner, I don't know if you're even gonna watch this video, but I really do value your opinion and I appreciate your perspective on the housing market in general and also in the Seattle area. Thank you for continuing to make content and share with the real estate community and others. I don't have anything bad to say about this video at all. I think sometimes the my response videos are super negative. I don't think I disagree with any of this. I will make a separate predictions video. It will have some similar predictions. A lot of these things that he talks about here, I've been talking about on this channel and talk about on this channel regularly. So he's got a nice uh, succinct predictions list here. I'll put out mine here in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> and if we don't get to connect again here before the end of the year, thank you so much for watching and paying attention to this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing if you wanna hear my thoughts on the Seattle housing market on a monthly basis. And of course, if you are new to the area and you're thinking about buying or you just wanna connect about your situation, I'd be happy to be a resource for you.